Thank you, Lee. Great day today, isn't it? Isn't it a great day? It's beautiful sunny out there. It's still like autumn. And um, I came in last night on the train. I live in Gloucester. Anybody may have come from Gloucester. In Gloucester, you see, we watch our pennies. And, uh, of course, in Gloucester, men are men, and the sheep are all very scared. But the, the point about Gloucester is that we watch our pennies. And this little story now illustrates where my case study is going to take you. This morning, I like to... Uh, be a bit careful with my overnight accommodation. Last night I was in a travel lodge in London, just outside the Bank of England. How cool is that? Really good price as well. But last week we were doing this at the East Midlands Airport, and I stopped at the travel lodge, because I do, and um, I checked out in the morning, and these um, pilots walked in. British Airways pilots, you know, with all the regalia. The, the co-pilot was there as well. This was the travel lodge, you know. And I turned round to this, uh, this pilot and I said to him, I said, times must be hard at British Airways if they're putting you up in travel lodges now. And he went very bright red. You know, he was embarrassed by that. And the point behind that is that times are hard for British Airways. I don't think they are. But of course, landlords, buy to let landlords, times are hard. The money they were making, particularly those who are highly leveraged, they won't be making as much profit with the taxation changes coming in. We know this. So today, I'm going to take you into an R07 case study which looks at buy to lets The point behind this case study is going to introduce you to the advanced mortgage paper. For those of you that haven't done it before, I'm going to take you to the level in which the advanced mortgage paper takes you, R07. I'm around until lunchtime, so if you have any questions about the R07, happy to answer anything for you. We're going to get a little bit interactive as well this morning. I think that's a good thing. So uh, you, you'll have a chance to, to work through some of the details. So without any further ado, let me introduce you then to our case study. What I'm going to do is click it on there. You do have access to this on your tables. So we, we've printed off some sheets for you. If you prefer to read in the traditional way on paper, because people often do, don't they? So if you want to have a look at that on paper, you can do it. Everything's up here on this great giant big screen, so that's good news. Now, I'm not going to read it out to you because, hey, we were taught to read at school, weren't we? So, I'm not going to read a slide to you because you can read that. So, I'm going to give you uh, 15 to 20 seconds to digest the case study before we start asking questions on it. Okay, as you can see, Gareth, by the way, this is taken from Gavin and Stacey, Gareth and Sean. Gareth has got himself a little money pot. I don't know if any of you have any holiday cottages as, as such, but this one is beautiful. Take a look at that picture. Isn't that lovely? We're talking here near Pembrokeshire, West Wales. Beautiful part of the world. But who remembers um, a thing called Myrus? Good grief. You know, I'm showing my age there, aren't I? Myrus. Now, Myrus is a very good analogy for this. Now, Myrus was created by Geoffrey Howe in 1983. I remember because I was working at the Leeds Permanent Building Society as a mortgage arranger, a mortgage consultant. And this made interest-only mortgages really good, really competitive. And what do we sell on the back of those? Endowments. Oh, it's a dirty word, isn't it? But they fed my kids for, for many, many years endowment sales. But the point about mortgage interest relief at source it was a government subsidy which allowed people to buy properties at a low cost. And it was fine for its age, but it gradually was eroded. In fact, the first erosion was 1988. Was it um, Chancellor, was it? Chancellor 88? The double tax relief, remember? Yeah, yeah, it was uh, Nigel Lawson, wasn't it? He removed double taxation relief. If you bought a house and you weren't married, you got extra tax relief. And I remember he put a deadline at the end of June or something, July. In his memoirs, he regretted that. He said he should have done it on budget day because it created a huge bubble in the property market. And I was working down in uh, Guildford, Woking area, as an estate agent, mortgage advisor. And we did a load of business, of course, but then it just dropped. And prices collapsed in the southeast. And then you had the joke, didn't you, about estate agents. And I was an estate agent at the time. Why don't estate agents look out the window in the morning? because they'll have nothing to do in the afternoon. It became like that. It was like, uh, like terrible. <laughs> Apologies to all the state agents in the room. 
Now, the point I'm making here is it wasn't finally abolished until 1999 when Gordon Brown kicked it out completely. He said it was a middle-class tax benefit, and it was. Now, that's going to happen to this. You'll find that 2020, the government at the time will then get rid of basic rate relief as well. Private landlords, personal landlords, individual landlords will not get any tax relief on their mortgage interest. And if they're highly leveraged, they, uh, there's no business model there. If they're low leverage, fine, yeah, of course. But uh, the old traditional individual buying loads of properties, getting tax relief, is gone. And that's why we need... You've been a great audience. Thank you very much for your time. God bless you all. Thank you. <laughs>